All right, I'm going to take a look at some of these um, notifications, these replies I've gotten. And let's pick one out. Let's pick on somebody. Let's see. Sorry, I did not make a mistake. Oh, yeah, you made a mistake, buddy. All right, so let's just address this first one here. So, Michael, you don't think Jesus did enough to save you if not him who will save you? your soul all right so um, in this conversation here uh, this fellow here says that once saved always saved is not true that you have to uh, be a good person I, and I want to try to get these guys to admit uh, that uh, they still sin and then also to understand that your sin does not save you nor does it unsave you or whatever you know the law is there to show us what sin is and the law is there to bring us to faith in Jesus Christ and then once faith has come we are no longer under the law rather we are under grace by grace are you saved through faith it's always been about faith and of course if you don't have faith and believe that Jesus died for you then naturally you're gonna think you could lose salvation now Jesus says you have everlasting life and it's just a matter of common sense man if you have everlasting life right now, how long is it going to last? It's going to last forever. It's simple logic. Okay? Now, in Matthew 7, 20, uh, verses 21 through 23, it says, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out uh, devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works and and this is brilliant uh, this um, response by this guy here all right and but then you know after they said it all hey have we not done all these great things in your name we're calling you Lord we're doing all these great things and Jesus says I never knew you I never knew you that doesn't that's not an implication at all that you were saved, but then you lost your salvation. When he says, I never knew you, that means you were never saved. And all these good works that you think you're doing, they never saved you. No mention of sin at all. And none of these three things that are listed here are sins. None of these are wicked things, bad things. It's the fact that they did not believe in Jesus and what he has done for them. They were trusting in themselves. It's obvious. <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, I remember years ago, uh, you know, I would have conversations with Muslims about, well, hey, Sarah, like Surah 2 verse 191 says to uh, lie in wait and kill your enemy and they say no 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 that's not what it said you can't you can't trust the English translation you gotta read the original in Arabic and then you'll understand what it says you can't trust no English translation I was, well just tell me in English what it says, because there's ain't no way in H-E double hockey sticks am I going to learn Arabic. So now uh, you got these people saying, I got to learn Hebrew, I got to learn Greek, I got to learn Aramaic, and I've got to learn uh, Arabic, and I've got to also, and I've heard people say, you got to learn the Ethiopian language, whatever that is. Yeah, I can't know what God says in English. What kind of God do you guys worship? really and have you not read the Bible at all I 
let me see if I can find a verse here. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Did you hear that? I, you know, sometimes I think I read it and it just bounces off people. Really? With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And then, I mean, you could go to Acts 2 and read about how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. There's no mention, no suggestion, no implication at all about this idea that you have to learn foreign languages to know what God says. None whatsoever. And of course, uh, that verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 is echoing what we read in Isaiah 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people? And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Now, uh, we go to, there's another verse in Isaiah that I'd like to go to. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. See, I got to get, I'm clumping two verses together, I think. Or maybe I'm just way off here. Let's read it. Isaiah 59, verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant, my promise, my guarantee with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So you got the word of God in your mouth forever. And it doesn't matter what language you speak, right? For the word of the Lord endures forever. Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. And even Paul says, where there are tongues, they shall cease. The original, we see this already in Genesis 11 with the original language. After the flood, they all spoke one language. They, before the flood, they all spoke one language, and they still spoke one language after the flood until God saw that these guys are building a tower to the heavens, and there is nothing that will restrain them to do whatever they imagine to do. And so God said, let us go down there and confound their language. And so that original language no longer is spoken, no longer could be understood. And of course, a verse that I like to uh, reference here is in Genesis 2. And Adam says, and this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Those words that Adam spoke, that language was not spoken after those specific sounds that came out of his mouth were not spoken after God confounded the language. Now, when Jesus comes and we are resurrected and we are in a new heaven and all the wickedness and evilness of the world is done away with, there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death, we will be given a new language, a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. All the languages spoken in the world today will be done away with. All right, so you're going to tell me i got to learn Greek. 
makes no sense man the only reason somebody would say hey what you're reading there you know in Matthew 7 and then will I profess unto them I never knew you what's the yay has God said right now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea has God said same thing our friend is saying here read Matthew 7 yea has God said I never knew you think about it 